Um, we got a lot to cover in the next hour here, so I'm going to cut right to the chase. Let's get some real quick intros, and we're going to get right into the first question. Vass, you first. My name is Chris Vasser, and I am the host of the Make Defense Great Again podcast, as well as the Run Bass Option podcast, and I will be hosting today. I'm Cody Alexander, author of Match Quarters. I'm the Cody C. at Mesquite Horn High School here in Dallas. I'm Kyle Kogan. I'm the head coach at Lexington High School in Lexington, Missouri. I'm Adam Gaylor. I'm the defense coordinator at Jinx High School in Jinx, Oklahoma. I'm Chris King. I'm the defense coordinator at St. John Bosco High School, Southern California. Let's dive right into our first question. Vass, I'm going to let you take the reins here, but I'll just set this up real quickly. How have you changed your defensive structure over the past few years to handle downfield RPOs? That whole nature has kind of really transformed the last couple of years. Um, I'll, I'll kick it off with Vass. So the first thing that we did is uh, we started tying the uh, coverage into the front. And one of the things and, and what we had done – far with that is we'd said all right we're going to divorce the front from the coverage in our system and, and we do a lot of the times but we started matching fronts with coverage the old ways of having the overhangs go run and take the quarterback you know when you all you were seeing was zone read bubble you really couldn't do that stuff anymore so the the first thing we did is we started setting we're, we're in over front so we started setting our front to the field more and sitting our ends and, and because with the downfield RPOs, you know, back when it was zone read bubble, it was, well, we're going to make the quarterback do the, the hardest thing, which is to pull the ball, run around the edge and then throw a bubble screen on the run instead of just handing off the ball. Right. That makes sense. So what happened was now with the down the field RPOs, it's an easier throw. It's an easier to pull a ball and throw a quick slant than it is where you're, you're reading the end, coming around and trying to throw that bubble on a run. And then with these pre-snap gifts involved, we said, you know what, we're going to, we're going to make them hand off the ball. And we do have our change-ups, but we're going to, we're going to set the three to the field, set the end, cover down. So we're thinking coverage first, let them hand the ball off. Um, really talk them into running one play, which is we're going to, say that you're going to hand the ball off and we're going to go play that one play instead of trying to play four plays, especially now because they've come easier. And so that was, it was a theory shift, but it was also how we wanted to change things. And from a leverage perspective and a coverage perspective, we started doing the thing, which, you know, Kyle and I have talked about works in high school. It works in a lot of colleges where you're putting, you know, the overhang to the back is out of the fit overhang away can get in the fit I believe you call that slinging the fits Kyle sh nod your head if I'm on the right track I don't always know how you call stuff but we've had this we just had this conversation the other day now if you're seeing teams I mean I haven't seen any teams in high school yet that read opposite if you go down that way you have to start treating like the pistol so those are some of the things that we did uh, we changed really the uh, the process because it you know when you used to threat defend zone rebubble it was like oh it's triple option you want to you don't want to let him hand the dive off well it's not triple option to me because when you're running that stuff and you're pitching the ball laterally or behind you you can layer your defense that way to defend it but all of a sudden the pitch is down the field you can't layer the you can't layer your defense the same way so that's that's kind of my answer there um cody what you got yeah, so like uh, like Vass talked about, um, been doing this since when I was back at Baylor in 2011, setting the three to the field, covering down, don't give any gifts, pressing as much as you possibly can, or at least giving the illusion of press, press Baylor. That way, what you want to do at the pre-snap is make sure that they don't have a gift read, that they can't just throw to a spot. Uh, that, hey, your cover down is too tight to the box or, hey, that corner is about, you know, eight yards off of the, the X receiver and we're just going to throw it to them. The two biggest things that we've done recently is really just change the way we play coverage. 
uh, you know, my philosophy has always been, I don't want to give a gift. I want to, I, you know, like Bass, I'm, I'm with him. I, I want to make sure that they hand the ball off. I want them running the ball. I don't want them. And me and Bass talked about this. I think it was uh, last year, early in the year around this time about how the least efficient to play in football is to run the ball. So why not just make them run the ball? Uh, the biggest thing that we changed was in our, in our cover two stuff, we were getting a lot of bubbles, but they weren't throwing the bubble. They were trying to tuck it in behind the corner as he's trapping that, that bubble. And we were getting a lot of, uh, you know, really fade bubbles, curl bubbles and things like that. So we pl started playing what I call squat technique means that we don't, we have a no cover zone for that corner. So that corner's not taking anything under five yards. So even if they put press horizontal, you know, maybe early in the game, we're, we're slamming down on that, but then later, Hey, we're not going to, we're not going to take that. That's one thing that we've done. Uh, keeping the safety high uh, and, and manipulating the front to where the safety to the single receiver side isn't slamming down into the box. He doesn't have to get down there as quickly as possible because he doesn't have a gap. Uh, and then, and really, you know, we've seen, I have seen anyway, flop reads. Uh, I saw it in the big 12 when I coached in the big 12, I saw it when I came out of, out of, uh, out of college into the high school people, people in, in the DFW area, they, they will read the backside. If, you, if they feel like you're, you're going to slam that overhang, into and sling the fits and you're going to get that guy in there they're going to throw that ball out there so being able to manipulate and, and kind of create different looks that's something that you that i've had to add into it to it to kind of confuse the quarterbacks and get them to, to throw the flop read or like bass said treat it like a uh, pistol mr kyle kogan did i steal all of your thunder Yeah, we're very similar to uh, those guys. Um, I would say about three or four years ago is when we made the big shift to one high. Um, we used to be, you know, quarter, quarter, half, quarters team, Virginia Tech robber, stuff like that, spot drop three back in the day. And um, when we start, we, we see a lot more like pop pass and like gifts, hitches, things like that. We don't necessarily see third level stuff. But like back then, I was more worried about manipulating run fits and like max fitting the run, you know, overhangs are always in and we're always plus one and it doesn't matter what coverage we're in, you know, we're going to stop quarterback run or whatever it might be. And until, you know, I started getting beat on basically all the RPO stuff, the, you know, horizontal stretches and things like that was when I really realized that we needed to start covering down and you know, we needed to worry about covering people for first and foremost, rather than do we always have, you know, seven to nine guys in the fit. So very, very similar to those guys. Mr. Adam Gaylor, what do you got? Yeah, very, uh, you know, we used to be a big and we still play a decent amount of, of uh, zone match, read two palms, whatever you want to call it. Um, but we, we, we played, we started playing, it would have been around 2015, we started playing more press quarters um, and more brackets, you know, more, we, we had played robber, um, you know, like, like Kyle alluded to, um, the 425 robber coverage, we had started playing it um, 2010, 2011 um, to help cover up um, the, you know, a lot of times we would, we would play it to the back you know, to the, to the side of the offset back. And then we started getting pistol RPOs and, um, you know, you, you, you had to post snap, read it. And, um, you know, it's, it's similar to what you guys were uh, alluded to with, with flop RPOs, it, it's gotta be off quarterback vision. Uh, and so it made it tougher. Um, and then the other thing too, is, is like Kyle talked about, you know, we're a, we're a middle field open team but we started playing more middle field close just because of that. Um, just because of that fact, we want to make sure we can, we can cover down the slots um, and whether it be, whether it be man or, or cover three, but um, on, on early downs and, and RPO downs um, playing more one high. Um, but it's like you guys talked about, um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, we're going to, you know, we want to make sure we, we manipulate the run fits to make sure they hand the football off. You know, that's the, you know, that's the, the we want to, we want to give the illusion, um, you know, we want to, we want to force their hand and force them to hand the football off, um, you know, at, at the end of the day. And the other thing too is, is, uh, you know, making sure you have pressures 
uh, whether it be to the back or, or away from the back, um, that can that can force uh, the read as well. Mr. King, what do you got? Unmute there, sorry. Um, we haven't really changed our structure a whole lot. Um, and we haven't really, really only seen the last couple of years. So um, we've done maybe a little bit more middle field closed, more cover one stuff that we've done in the past because of the down, down the field RPOs. Um, it kind of really made us change our thought process of, again, what do we want them to do? You know, before when it was just kind of zone read, RP, RPO bubble stuff, we kind of really kind of played all three plays. But now we wanted to make sure we're just kind of playing one. Um, it made us change the leverage, obviously, based off the, our coverage. And, and again, where we're trying to dictate the ball to, uh, change our front. Again, sometimes we see some pretty good backs uh, in our in our area. So, um, you know, if, we're throw, if, if we can get them to throw into a bracket and kind of disguise something, that's not, that's not a problem either. Um, but ter tertiary, we want to obviously get the guy to hand the ball off. Um, and obviously dictate to them what we want them to do. And it's a little bit easier now because that kind of could put us down and kind of another little rabbit hole of how we can do that, of uh, not play every play. So the down the field RPO has kind of made us change our structure and that aspect of just kind of the thought process um, has actually been helpful for us um, to kind of clean up some things that we've had to clean up in the last couple of years. Great stuff. So I want to kind of you know, go back to Kyle here for a second. As we just talked about this the other day, and um, for those coaches that want to play too high, and we talked about with the flock reads, um, you were mentioning the other day, and we were going through the other day, how you would do that. Could you share with the audience your reasoning? I mean, I, I had said, just treat everything like pistol, read it post-snap, but I think that might be a little too to Cavalier. I mean, it's just very simplistic. Oh, it's straight like pistol. Well, yeah, but what does that mean? Do you want to kind of take guys through that, how, how you would advise that? You're talking like what sling in the fits is? Is that is that what you're saying? No, more so like if you see teams that are, because you were talking about sling in the fits, because the conversation we had was, you know, you can do it if they don't throw opposite side RPOs, you can have the guy to the back out of the fit, the guy away from the back in the fit, but when they start reading the other side, then what do you do? To me, to me, you got to sling the fits then. I, I think is. I mean, I've been misunderstood then. Can you, can you take, cause I, I know you say that a lot. Could you once and for all answer what that means? Cause I know you and I talk to you about as much as anybody and I'm not 100% clear on exactly what you mean by that. I gotcha. You're on the stand, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, this this was a term that um, me or Dante, I don't remember which one of us came up with. Barty, if you guys have listened to me talk, you know, I talk about him all the time. So slinging the fits is basically the easiest way to think about it would be two by two. And you got the Sam to the side of the back, the mic in the box and the will. Um, away from the back. So it would be, um, and we'll just say it's four down for the sake of just easy gaps. So say we're playing like over front, we're setting it to the field. Um, we got an open A gap to the field. We got an open B gap into the boundary. So if they run RPO to the field, right, we want to cover down with the SAM, right, which is, you know, stuff that we didn't do, you know, four some years ago or whatever we used to say, go play run, right? We're going to max fit everything, you know, throw the ball in the perimeter. We'll tackle it. What, you know, whatever well, problem became, we weren't as good on the perimeter. They would block us. We would miss a tackle. I mean, it's 88 out the gate. It is touchdown, right? So if we couldn't tackle in space because we weren't as good, then they would, what I like to say is they would circle the defense, which is just basic middle school football, right? How do you win in that? like youth football you get outside and run down the sideline so to prevent that from happening we would truly stay three over two or you know whatever we're playing over there right and say sam you cover down and we force the handoff right so the mic is playing run regardless because he's in the box okay and the will is going to fall into the open b gap into the boundary so we can fit the six presented gaps. Sorry, this is assuming 10 personnel. 
fit the six open gaps that the offensive line has presented when really we only have five guys that are truly like in the tackle box, right? Um, if they're going to start throwing RPO opposite, right? Flop reads, or they put the back in pistol. Okay. Then you need to get into slinging the fits. So that would be, they're running an RPO. I don't really care what the run scheme is. Um, and they're looking at the will, right? So if the will falls into the B gap, they're going to pull the ball and they're going to throw it on the perimeter, which again, now it's the same problem. If we can't tackle in space, they circle the defense. It's middle school football. They get, they get the corner and run down the sideline, right? So it's, we need to cover down, stay three over two on that side. Okay. To force the handoff. Okay. So now the mic is playing run regardless, right? He's going to fit the open B gap to the weak side. And then we need to get the Sam in the open A gap to the field side, right? So now again, we're fitting the six gaps with six guys. Does that make sense? I'm just looking at head nods. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then obviously that gets into, you know, okay, realistically space wise, can the Sam get all the way to the A gap? Well, depending upon the formation, Probably not. So then you need to run games up front, chop the front up, cut the front up, you know, whatever you say, stunts to try to push the ball out. So it's not as far for the Sam to have to go. So to me, that's what slinging the fits is. The same ideas gets applied to three by one. So um, it would be like between um, um, the mic, the will and the free safety. So say you just slide the backers the mic would be playing the cover down on three as what was the Sam. The will is the box player, no matter what. The free safety is um, the back guy replacing basically the will. And then it's the same idea of if they throw RPO strong, the mic's out, the free safety gets in. The will is obviously in no matter what, because he's in the box at this point versus three by one. If they throw the RPO weak, then the free safety's out, the will is in and then the mic is falling in. So to me, that's what slinging the fits is. Beautiful. I'm glad we got you on record. And I am happy to know that that is something that you came up with and I'll take him up with because I get questions about this. What is, where does sling the fits? I'm like, I've never heard of that before. Like, I, I'm like, it just came out of nowhere. So, and I- I'm going that one here at Huddle. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that. I think that's something Kyle came up with. So I'm happy to know that it actually was. What's funny about this answer before we move on to the next one is if I had a time machine and it was whatever day, March 2nd, 2011, 10 years ago, and I said, okay, guys, in 10 years, we're going to do a Zoom and all of our answers to defending an offense is to let them run the ball. What would your responses have been to that? So it just showed you where the, the game is going. Um, anyway, so the next question, um, we are kicking off with Kyle Kogan. Uh, the question is, what are some specific things that you've done to combat an athletic quarterback that likes to improvise and run when things break down? So we kind of had that happen uh, the second game of the year. Um, usually what I'll normally do is, um, I just move my jack, depending upon how smart our like jack kid is, um, will be depend, will basically depend on how much I teach that kid. Um, this year he was not able to learn coverage stuff. So I'll just put it like that. So he was basically our kid that we moved around to either spike quarterback or, you know, be the daylight rusher or the fourth rusher off the edge for, you know, whatever we're doing. Right. So he's a fairly athletic kid. Um, he was all conference, whatever first team kid. So he was really good. Um, and then the other team that they just had a freak quarterback athlete. Um, and he legitimately was just out running our spy kid. It was four verticals drop back, nothing's open, take off running and we could not contain this kid. So at halftime, all I did, this is just genius coaching, right? Was I, I took the fastest kid on the team and I replaced him <laughs> at the Jack. And I said, you have the quarterback man to man everywhere he goes. 
and it worked out pretty good. So, <laughs> what, what does Chappelle say? Modern problems require modern solutions. <laughs> yes, I, I try not to overthink that one. <laughs> Just to pick. Good. That's a good one. Pick the fastest kid and put it on their fastest kid. Put them on their hey. fastest kid. Well, hey, if it works, it's genius. All right. Next will be Adam Gaylor from Jenks. Coach, what do you uh, what do you do when you see this kind of thing? Um, you know, being odd spaced, you know, for us, we want to uh, change up. You know, we 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 run a lot of insert rushes with the inside linebacker. So whether it's daylight or whether it's snap blitzes, um, we're going to bring a lot of in, into the, the, our fourth rushers. Um, and it kind of depends, kind of like what Kyle said with personnel. It kind of depends on. Uh, you know, is our Jack the best fourth rusher that we're going to bring him and um, in uh, uh, as the fourth activated rusher? Uh, this past year, we had a really good uh, will, and so we ran a lot of inserts with him. So that's one way to control it uh, and to keep a you know to to that way you've got uh, you know you've got your your four spokes of of uh, of rush lanes. Um, I've heard Patrick Tony say that we we would always say like interior rushers, your your near cheek. If you're a cop rusher, then your your aiming point is the deep shoulder of the quarterback. Um, so that you know that that's one thing that, that we've done um, more so over the last couple of years. And then um, you know uh, the the mirror. You know we would call mirror even on par downs on early downs. And so if we call mirror, it's just spy. And so instead of inserting the fourth rusher, that fourth rusher is is. Um, Mirror tells our, our D line to break the pocket. So if I so we we base out of out of four eyes. So it just tells our four eyes it's opposite of daylight. Daylight they're gonna they're gonna play technique and then on on pass they contain. Um, when we say when we say mirror, uh, that tells them to stay inside and they're gonna break the pocket. We're gonna force the quarterback to go right or left and then that's when our 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 spy is going to you know become the fourth rusher. He's gonna you know aggressive. It's an aggressive spy. It's not, you know, we're hovering him. It's as soon as the pocket breaks, we're adding with the fourth rusher. Um, and then uh, the other thing, if we want to trade, if we want to, you know, if we want to stay truly drop eight um, coverage is we would must rush the nose. So we would, you know, the, the four eyes would have two-way goes and the nose guard would must rush and, and um, you know, just basically stay up the middle, not, not get worked to the side of the center, but stay nose to nose. And, in in re, you know he's not your spy because obviously our 300 pound nose guard is not going to spy a super athletic quarterback but he's going to the, the pocket you know that your your contain player is going to work out and he really is the one that's going to be responsible for pushing the pocket up the middle um, and if that does break then then you still got you know one of your you know your hook you've got an extra hook player underneath to be the uh, uh, be the other spy player. That's great stuff, uh, Coach King. Uh, what do you do when you see running quarterbacks? Well, uh, one of the things we want to make sure we're careful of is certain checks that we have. You know, we're a big cover seven team, so if we get bunch, maybe we're checking to bingo and we're out there matching everything, that might not be the best call because that lets your quarterback kind of scramble around with that four-man rush. So if we are playing some quarters too high stuff, uh, we can have a tag, obviously must rush that guy. Uh, we want to make sure we balance the rush, not talk about getting too far upfield, um, those type of things. So, you know, if we did call us cover seven and they came out in bunch, and it was a quarterback, we might just automatically check and do a cover one check to make sure we have that covered as we're busy out there matching everything and we're just rushing forward that he doesn't get free. Um, on third down, obviously our menu on third down will change a little bit. We run mirror as well. Uh, that would be definitely be a call. Um, obviously more kind of one high pressure. There's a guy kind of that rat player is now really looking for the quarterback. Um, in this situation, again, if he's a real athletic guy, more cover one and we just won't cut crossers, we'll basically spy and look for him, you know, they're, we're busy cutting guys and he sees nothing open, he's scrambling. That's always not the best deal. So instead of cutting guys, we'll play more, we're kind of rat in the hole, um, more mirror on third downs, more kind of our one high pressures, less obviously, you know, Mars five type stuff. We're getting him out of the pocket, letting him run around. Um, so that's kind of our third down menu would change a little bit with a real athletic quarterback. Again, our, on our base downs, maybe a little bit more cover one, and then if we are just have to play quarters and trying to match everything, um, you know, try to have a more athletic guy be able to have mush rush. So if he does break the pocket, we can go go chase his butt down. Good stuff. Coach Alexander. 
Yeah, one thing that we've done before is taken a, a secondary player and from may, maybe it's your boundary safety or uh, middle safety if you're in a three high. And what we've done is we've dropped them down into the box as the as a spy guy for the quarterback. Uh, that's something that we've done. Use leverage, you know, makes it look like we're spinning to a one high or we're playing our our man free stuff, but really he's got he's got an eye on the quarterback. That way we can kind of get some of the calls that we want to. Um, and either hu really hug rush the back or, or do some other things in, in a man situation. Or if we need to have zone eyes, you know, we're at least dropping that guy down into the spot where uh, it kind of frees up some, some of our lesser athletes to do that. That's one way to put an athlete on an athlete uh, and not necessarily completely have to change everything that we are. The other thing that I like to do is I, I most athletic quarterbacks like to run a, sing a certain way. Uh, I think we're all right hand, left hand dominant, and they like to go a certain way. So I track that. If we know that we're, hey, like we played, we played a team this year. Their their quarterback is a Division one athlete. He's not going to play quarterback at the next level, but he's going to play like a safety or receiver type guy. And so for us, what we wanted to do was track where is he scrambling? Does he like to go to the right? Does he like to go to the left? And then what we're going to do is we're going to build a package around that to where we're not going to let him run that way, uh, make him left handed or right handed, depending on what he is. And then finally what I found to be successful is, is really attack. We want to make, we want to make that decision for that kid quick. Most athletic quarterbacks, I think we're all, I think we all agree that they're, they're not going through the progressions the same way as like a, a stand in the pocket kid. I, we, we see kind of both uh, where I'm at. Uh, we want to make that decision quick for that kid. If we're, we want to make him run it, it, right now, but we want to bottle it up. So we're going to create pressures that are going to attack the edge, but we're going to have interior integrity so that we can bottle them up or we're going to have our, our spy guy or athlete on the other side uh, waiting for him. Kind of like you would in, in your mirror stuff or your flush stuff where you're trying to break the pocket one way. You know, we've done that as well on third down where you're not necessarily bringing the heat on third down, but you're doing more of a break pocket. You know, we, we have a, we have a call that we, we can flush it right or left and, and we, we get in our five Oh five and, and, and cause we are odd and that way our, our DNs, are, are going to break it and we're going to break it away from, from the quarterback strength. So that way that quarterback has to work to, to the way that he doesn't want to work. Uh, and so that's one thing that I've, I found that's been helpful in, in is tracking where that guy likes to go. Yeah, that's, that's all good stuff. And, and my answer, I'm just going to show something real quick here in a second, but the first thing that we did was we played at a too high. So imagine you're in, like two man under whatever, but you put one of the safeties in the middle of the field. And then you just put, you drop down one of the safeties. He's a more athletic player. You bring him down. I picked it up from somebody. We called it, you know, you usually have a rat in the house, a uh, rat in the hole, called it mouse. So you're looking for the quarterback. Um, we basically do the exact same thing that everybody else has talked about. Um, I reached an epiphany a couple of years ago where, you know, we're trying to contain these running quarterbacks and we were turning our pass rush. It was a disaster. It was, we weren't getting any pressure. We were letting them sit back there. And so I had a conversation with um, Tosh Lapoy when he was at Alabama and they said, you know, we have this mirror concept and it's basically, they're going to break the pocket anyway. And for you to really keep them in the pocket, you're, you're doing them a favor in a sense, because you're just giving them time. You're not coming up fields. You're not really doing much. And so it's, we're going to force them where we want them to go. So we're not going to show much stuff on here because we got five guys and not a lot of time. Uh, but I will show just so, because we have talked about this so much. I wanted you guys to see this. Uh, so this is mirror. What you're trying to do is you're trying to break the pocket here Somebody's got the running back and, and you don't have to mug up. You can do that. I mean, we do it. So we try to help these guys get inside. The guy away from the back is your spy. This guy has the running back. So he would end up taking their quarterback if he breaks this way. And then what Cody said and, and others with flush is you basically, we, and, I, and, and again, mirror is, it's a generic term. It's not because people say, well, how do you run mirror? It depends. So this is also a, a generic term. So you're basically running a high-low stunt on one side. You are coming underneath, forcing the quarterback around, and then you're telling, you know, what, what are these offensive tackles told, you know, told? If they try to run by, you let them go, right? That's what you're told. All right, cool. Let me run by, and we're just going to keep running around, and we'll catch you over there. And it forces the quarterback to go to where he doesn't want to go. So those are some quick hits right there. And um, 
you know, like I said, I know we weren't doing many drawings and stuff, but we all mentioned the same thing and I had a drawing of it. So I was like, well, I might as well flash this up for everybody. So uh, thanks for that, guys. We're going to go to the next question, which is based uh, around pass protection. And I know an unscientific poll of talking to coaches of the last decade, I feel like pass protection is regional. Uh, you know, there's some leagues where everybody runs full slide. There's some areas where everything is five man Bob release the back every play, that sort of thing. So my question is two parts. The first part is what protections do you see the most? And then what, how do you like to attack it? Maybe it's something specific. Maybe it's a general um, idea, but what do you guys see the most? And I, and I mean, let's, let's stick to third down or obvious passing downs. So what do you see the most and how do you try to attack it? What's your go-to? First person we'll go to here is Adam Gaylor. You know, the, the, the basic that we see is um, the most popular we see here is, uh, is half man, half slide six man protection. Um, and, and the guys we play do a good job of, of not always making the, the, the back pre-snap alignment side, the man side. So they bring the back across, um, you know, they, they do a good job of changing it up. Um, you know, the other one that we started seeing, and I don't know if it's just us, um, I, cause I, I see it more against us than, than other people we play. And I don't know because it's our third down, what we do on third down or what, but, um, more seven man, like out of out of twenty ish or eleven sets, um, like sniffer stuff, more seven man uh, on third down. down. Yeah, third down. Yeah, and then yeah, oh yeah, run and running two That's man route because we know. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it, it's you know, it, if we're in, if we're bringing four, we're great because we're we're good in coverage, right? And then um, you know, you're not going to get great pressure that way. But you know, our answer was you know, if we're getting a bunch of seven man pass pro is the you know, the, the Yankee stuff, you know, where you, where you, you're, you're in two man and you add on the, 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 your two inside linebackers on the sniffer in the back and you keep your, you know, your, your, your five techniques under the first guy. And then your, you know, your, your, your second, your, your front side linebacker spill in the back. And then your, your wrapper, the second linebacker is going to be the free hitter um, versus that. But the, for us, um, a, a big one is, is, is the double mug, you know, the double a gap front, you know, we, uh, people really don't, you know, they, they get in, they, we see a bunch of full slide. People don't want to stay in man slide um, versus double mug. So we get in double mug and we don't bring double a gap. We're going to get in double mug and bring, you know, corner pressure, corner sim. Um, you know, we can check it based to the back, but we get in double mug and we see a bunch of slide pro. Um, you know, Coach Wilkinson and Broken Arrow and, and Rowdy Harper, uh, you know, of, of uh, Run the Power fame, we play them and they do, they're, they're as well coached offensively as anybody, you know, we faced. And so they, their answer was to uh, uh, verse our double mug, double mug stuff was to walk the running back up in the A gap. Like uh, I saw Green Bay do it back in the early, the late 2000s against Chicago Bears when they were um, in all their double mug stuff. So that was, that was one thing. Um, you know, that we kind of hadn't seen from anybody else. And, and uh, you know, thankfully we were, we were rushing four and playing Tampa two behind it. So, uh, and they left the, the back end, the sniffer at the same time. So, but uh, half man, half slides, probably the, the, the biggest one we see. That's interesting. Did you then line up and double mug every snap so they could tell you if it was run or pass? We did not. No. Now we have in, in, in par downs got, got in and occasionally, but no, we, uh, uh, we did not uh, because they wouldn't do it all the time. You know, they, they, they would, they would run the same protection out of the, out of different looks. Mm. We played a team that tried that. And so I was like, every time we walked up into it, they would, <laughs> the back would move up. And then I was like, I, I think it was a third down uh, and they got the first and we were walked up and I, and I, and I looked, I looked at my assistant and it was first and 10. I was like, and I yelled the term, I'm like, just stand there pre-snap and the back stayed back and they ran the ball. I'm like, do it again. And then the back cheated up. I'm like, wait a minute. You're going to tell me if it's runner pass every snap now? No, Co oh. Coach Wilk and, and Coach Harper, well, they're, way too, they're, they're, they're way too smart for that. So offensive spies, and I know you're in here because you told me you were going to be. 
you just you better have a variance to that because I I we did it like the whole second half we lined up like that and I, I just kept going and again and again and then another thing real quick I want to add in one thing I picked up from LSU about the uh, I believe coach Amanda calls it YT protection is when you're getting slide in the back and a sniffer off the same side this is pretty cool so they got they played undercover one but what they would do is the strong safety or whatever they I don't know the deep safety of the field would come down and cover the tight end and as soon as he went the block he just triggered off the edge so instead of like how you would green dog a back they would green dog the tight end but just go so I mean you're asking for delay screen but if you sneak that in every once in a while because really the only way to beat that protect I mean I shouldn't say that is to bring somebody up off the edge and then try to get somebody underneath where that crease is created but it's hard, but then that's when you, like you said, you just drop seven or drop eight. You double everyone, because then you can, because they're like, you know, offensive coordinators, like, well, you can't double everyone. It's like, yeah, well, we can. We can now. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Coach, for that. Chris King, what's, uh, what do you got there? So we see the same. We see a half man, half slide, six man protection. Uh, the teams in our area do a really good job of lining up the back the one way and then obviously bringing it across the formation. Uh, it was funny you saying it's regional. Last couple of years, we played some teams from back east, um, and they were a full slide team. So, you know, we have our full slide beaters that we like. And the one year we played the both uh, back east teams, like a, a couple weeks apart from each other, like one week we had three sacks. And we're like, they're going to have to change their protection. And they came in the game and used that same protection. We ran out the same call, sacked them again. I was like, oh, man, this, is, this must be an east coast thing. You know, I'm so used to seeing half man, half slide. Um, because of um, – they do a good job, you know, flying up the back the one way and sliding across. Um, you know, we usually have some answers, two to the back, showing one slot, one, showing one side and having obviously blitz opposite of that. But they do a good job of changing up that half man, half slide based off where the back is. Um, you know, I know you did your, your 5-0 thing last week, uh, Vass, it was amazing. So on some third down stuff that you talked about here, we tried to do some of that to kind of get some 5-0 protection. Um, at that point, we're trying to get basically our best guy on their worst guy, uh, try to get some three, uh, some pass offs. Um, you know, some three-man, two-man pass-offs and that type of stuff. So um, we can get most teams that we play into 5-0. If we, you know, if we show 5-0, we're going to get big on big protection. And that's to us, is a little bit more easy to ma manipulate what we're seeing than the half-man, half-slide, because they can take that different ways and do different things. So we, you know, we're not great at it. It's something we're going to always add on to this year, even more than we've done in the past. Uh, but that's the way I can kind of dictate and know exactly what we're getting. So now we can kind of tee off on that then kind of the half man, half slide. You don't know which way they're going. You, you've guessed wrong. Um, so that's been pretty good for us last year. And we hope to add on to that, uh, especially if we play in the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, I heard that, I uh, heard that a little rumor that you may have hired somebody to help you with some of that stuff. Uh, absolutely, man. No, I, I just heard that. I mean, I didn't see it on the scoop yet, but I, I heard that. Um, well, let's make sure we got games first and then it'll be, it'll be out there. It'll be out there. All right, Cody, what are, you, uh, what are you thinking here? What do you see and uh, what do you like versus it? Uh, similar to what uh, Coach just said, you know, if we can get into a five-man front and we can get a big on big, then, then I feel like that's going to win uh, most times. We can, we can manipulate. We can, find, we can find the weakest, weakest link in that and we can manipulate that or we can try and get somebody to move uh, with some stunts. I think anytime you get in that 5-0 that world and you start getting man on blocking, you got to start moving people. Um, and you got to start, you got to start, you know, pinning guys. And then, and that's when you get your stunts. So I, I think if you can go with the five man front and you know, you're going to get your man on blocking, then you need to use stunts. We see a lot of slide lock. Um, I think everybody for the most part has said, you know, combo has been kind of the biggest thing or the fan, you know, we see it with the back inserting. Um, but we see a lot of slide lock and, and a lot of combo. Uh, and, and to me with the slide lock, that just tells that tackle is going to take that edge player and then they're going to slide the other four. Anytime you're going to do that, then you need to be attacking that B gap. I, you know, I look at protection in terms of the, the kind of the way that you, you fit the run or you, you fit gaps. Like if they're going to slide and they're going to lock that tackle, then we want to attack that B gap. We want we want to create some movement where that guard is, is working with that guy across and it's just widening that B gap. Um, if we're getting some kind of combo blocking, we're getting a man side and then we're getting slide away. That usually means that we can manipulate that a gap. Uh, and then now we're going to attack that a gap. What I like too, especially at a combo is 
is even if that back is, is stepping up, that guy's static. That means he's just standing there. A lot of those running backs are just standing there. Yet I've got a guy who's got now got a five yard head start. Now, by the time he meets the bag, he's got an eight yard head start. Uh, so to me, it's, it's simple science. I guess inertia. That guy's going to win most of the time. Now I've disrupted the quarterback. I got pressure in the face. And then finally, uh, we, we do see a little bit of slide protection and, and mostly out of empty. And, and so if we see, if we're not in our 5-0 stuff and, and we're seeing empty and, and we're, we're getting slide protection, we're going to, obviously we're going to attack those edges. So I think I look at it more of like, where's the attack point? Where's the gap that we want to attack? And then creating ways. And then off of that, looking at the personnel, who's the weakest link? And then, and then I'm going to hammer that nail until it, I, I, until that kid quits. And, and I think to me, that's, that's the key is who's the weakest link in that offensive line and then find a way to just beat them over the head with it. I like your way of thinking there, Kyle, what you got? Um, so I guess I'm the odd man out on this. Um, I don't see like any half slide, like none. Um, basically everything I see is Bob 5-0, which is to me the easiest thing to be. Really? If we're playing spread teams. Yeah. But mostly what I see is I see like max pro because I play so many 31, 30, you know, 22, 21 personnel teams, like it's max pro shots on, on in passing situations. So which usually when I was young and dumb, I would still blitz. And then I learned that's not a good idea because I would just leave kids one-on-one. -on -one. So eventually I figured out we're just, if they're going to block everybody, we're going to drop everybody. So we basically just play drop eight all the time. Yeah. I'm one of those idiots that was still like, <laughs> uh, I think we can bring four weeks still. And everybody's like, no, you idiot. They're sliding into it. I'm like, yeah, but if we try really hard, uh, I've just, been there. Will the win. If we just we will it to happen, it'll happen. No, but um, you guys, you know, hit it with the five zero stuff. I mean, I did a video that Chris mentioned where basically I got tired of studying pass protection, and and I'm like, wait. So and what I do, and, and I know what I'm what I'm saying. It's not groundbreaking. It's not. It's that. It's not a new concept. It is not groundbreaking. It's not like, wow. But what I do is I try to get playbooks from the offensive guys and I just thumb through. And if I see anything that's like, can't do this or must check play, I'm like, all right. Then I just kind of file that away. Um, and that was one of the things that you're studying NFL and college playbooks. Every time you'd see that look, it'd be like, check whatever. I'm like, hmm, so you mean I can just line up like this and they'll do what I want? which is the exact opposite reason why we don't on defense, we don't have a lot of like, Oh my God, this is our only check kind of a deal. Cause I don't want to be dictated to. I'm a rebel, Kyle. Come on, man. No, but um, in all seriousness. And so I'm just like, wait, so I don't have to study anymore what they do. I mean, I, I'm being reductionist here, but it's true. I mean, there's, if you line up and you cover and you line up in a five, five down, Five three zero three five doesn't matter who it is. X is on a chalkboard. They got it. They can do one of two things, and it it becomes like the wing T of defense in the sense that like I'm presenting this look, and if you do this, I'm gonna do this. Like offenses always get the if then. Why can't I have the if then? You know. So and, and that's it, it's basically. It's like you, you do wing T on defense uh, for third down. It's like, okay, you're going to do this protection. Well, here's my answer. And you could see it by person. If you can get it dialed in by personnel group and formation, you can be a step ahead of them. So um, that's my whole thing. And then my, yeah, no crap, Coach Vass tip for the day is if you're going to come off the edge, show that you're bringing inside pressure. If you're going to bring inside pressure, show like you're coming off the edge. Obviously, every once in a while, you got to just bring it like, you know, Coach Kaler, I'm sure when you're double A gap package, you're lining up sometimes and you're just bringing those guys and just just bringing it because you have to. Um, it's your fastball. But, you know, especially if you're not a team, if you're going to blitz inside, show them coming off the edge so they fan out to it and you can get pressure inside. You'll be so surprised um, how many times if you watch odd front teams, especially show edge pressure, 
the guard and tackle tear out to it. And you just bring the, the backer and the A gap away from the running back. And then comes Scott free. And it's also my pitch for five Oh stuff or odd front stuff. And I'm not, that's not usually where I, I live on defense, but if, if, if you're going to be a Bob team and your response to a five Oh defensive line is to release five, we, you have to make them pay. You have to make them pay. And you can easily do it out of that stuff. And you will be shocked at how many run throughs you'll have. So that's my PSA on pass pro. Um, also go read the blitzology block if you want to learn more about uh, pass pro. Shout out to Brian. Okay. So we've come to the last question. This one's kind of fun. Um, the question is, besides a base call, you know, don't give me, well, we play, we play over cover four. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, Besides a base day one call, what is something that you always keep in your game plan? Think of it as a safety blanket. What's a call that like, kind of like the, you know, when you talk to the double wing guys about they have their, their, their power, right. Is, oh my God, everything's falling apart. What do we do? We go back to what we do. Do you have something that you like your little snuggly blanket to feel comfortable? That's, can cover you down most first thing or, or verse most things rather. Um, do you have anything in the playbook that's always in? And uh, we'll start off with uh, Chris King from St. John Bosco. So my answer is you're, you're what I can't say is over cover four. <laughs> Just kidding. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, in each of our package, we'll kind of have a, a call that's, you know, our base call, but something that goes in every week and it's not really so much of a safety blanket to, to us. Our safety blanket is going to be that base call. You know, right. We're gonna have a base call in our in our four two five, uh, which is different than our two four package, which is different than our three four mint package. So there's a safety blanket call in that. The one call that I think is in every week is obviously the bringing six the double edge. You know, if things are going bad, we like you know, hey, we got to fight this with aggression. That's in every week. You know, in in, in our defense, you know, on our base downs, you're only gonna get certain things from us. You know, we're a press quarters team, so we're in some form of cover seven. A um, little bit of one high man, a little bit of one high zone. You know, third down, we're all over the place. We'll, we'll be in double mug one a week. We'll be in five the next week. We're all over the place there. But the one call that is not a base call that's in every week would be um, the bring six double edge to kind of fight some uh, things aren't going well. Let's get after their butt a little bit. And the other one is we always have some form of bear in there. You know, in, in the saving world, some kind of mint scissors, some kind of tight money rush. Um, or even you know, the, the Don Brown type stuff where we're going to, you know, bring guy off the edge and twist. Um, again, that's not so much a safety blanket. It's more of an aggressive safety blanket. Like, hey, we need to blitz. We need to get after him. So every week we're going to have some four to double six, which is really the bring six, the double edge, and at least one or two ways that we can get into bear. Um, and I don't know if those are great against everything, but that would be a, we need to be aggressive. We need to get after him. We're bleeding. What can we do here? Those calls are in every week. As as far as the safety blanket is, it's going to be our our base call out of one of our three packages. Yeah, and, and, and I don't mean, and, and maybe I did a terrible job asking the question. I, I didn't mean as though, um, like, you know, what is the thing that will calm the kids down? Or like, you know, obviously base defense, you know, if, if things, for normally for me, if things are going bad, um, you know, ours would be over, I mean, it's called different, but over quarter yeah. half or over quarter or whatever. But something that I guess maybe safety blanket was the wrong way to, to look at it, but like something that you always got in an old standby that's just, and, and I hope your answers are good because those are my answers. Eagle Blitz. So so you're talking even front, pinch the line, bring I'm, I'm talking Eagle chest, Blitz and Mint Scissors. Which is, more, we're, we're more, time more time Second, but we if so we need to force the issue especially if you're playing mint and you're playing an open edge so you're playing with like a jack to one side and a db to the other it's not a true hard edge setter just bring in that guy or switch it to a linebacker and bringing this guy off each edge um is is a great answer so I, i'm that's my answer too i'm piggybacking off of you uh cody what uh what do you like? What what uh, what do you always have in your game plan to keep uh, if with all hell breaks loose, or maybe it's you just want to make something happen, or maybe it's just you just want to throw a curveball. 
Yeah, if we're running a four down, I think bread and butter wise, it's some sort of five man edge pressure just to get just to get something off the edge, get something moving, kind of if they're a big RPO team, manipulate it, kind of give that give everybody an idea of where everything's going. I think one thing that being living in an odd world uh, for since I've been back at the high school level, one thing that we've we've been able to do and kind of create is it's really some four man pressures that we can keep our coverage integrity. We see so many good athletes on a week to week basis that sometimes it's like we would, I would love to just say kind of solve problems with aggression. But when you do that, you know, and, the, and you've got a FBS level quarterback and then they've got a receiver who's got an SEC offer. And, and then you start dealing with, okay, well, you know, the aggression part, we got to get some help. I think the four man pressure stuff, uh, creating a whole different package where they don't know where it's coming from. We can go inside, we can go outside, we can bring an inside guy outside. We, you know, to me, I think that has kind of been something that we've we've kind of evolved to is creating, you know, those those G read pressures where where you're either going two away from the back or it could be field or boundary, depending on what you want it to be uh, to kind of manipulate that. And you're, you're really just getting into kind of like an over and under reduction off of the snap of the ball. It's something easy for the kids to keep your coverage integrity. But, you know, if they're a gap team, we're either trying to, you know, it, it, four down nose will is how you, how you defeat power. Right. So, you know, it's kind of, you're getting kind of the same thing, but you're doing it from an odd, you know, an odd look. Uh, the other thing that I, I'll just say, you know, bear to us, it was something that, you know, this year when we got, we had problems, we were so young, what's the one thing that we can get into it and, and every makes it everything easy is, is let's get into bear uh, with our, with our rules off of that. So, you know, bears always going to be in there. Some sort of four man pressure is going to be in there out of the odd front to kind of give the offense a little bit of fits and kind of, and obviously that's going to be week to week based depending on the run game that we're seeing. Awesome stuff. Kyle. Uh, yeah, very similar to what uh, Cody and Chris just said is um, like mint scissors, like anybody that has played against me knows that I'm going to run the crap out of three, three double C blitz and play fire zone and man free, you know, no rat in the hole. Um, that's, that is like our, like go to blitz where we're just blitzing into bear out of the three, three. Um, the other one or the other two, like kind of like random things that I always make sure that we have in is I always make sure we have bear in because I've got beat by 31 personnel, like power I teams, and I did not have bear in. So I, I always make sure that we get bear in. And then the other thing that I always make sure that we have in is the, um, I call it pistoling the backers where you, where you tower or stack the backers for any kind of option, because we've had multiple teams throughout my seven, whatever years at Lexington, just bust out like 21, 22 personnel, like, like I veer just out of nowhere. Like they'd never showed it on film before and they just do it. And so yes. multiple conference teams have done this to us. Yeah. Wow. So I always make sure that we have like an option answer in. So to me, that's usually the stacking the two inside backers, whether that's you and I like to have it out of four down and three down. So that would be like, um, imagine like four, four and stacking the two inside backers or like three, four and stacking the two inside backers. I always make sure that I put that in um, during summer, fall, whatever camp, because I have had, I have been burned by that so many times of people just busting out inside, outside beer. And it's one of those things that's like, even though it's happening, you're like, they're not going to do that. You know how many times I've told people like, ah, it's like they're going to install triple option in the week. I guess I can't use that anymore. That's wild. And it's one of those things I bet the first or second time it happened, you're like, well, we probably don't have to worry about that. Nobody's crazy enough to do that again. And then the next time it happens, you're like, are you kidding me? So it's yeah. all different did this to you or was it the same team a couple different times no it's different teams has it's, anybody it's, tried it twice versus you uh nobody has done it twice no no nobody's done it twice but I, i've had different conference teams do it yeah pretty much yeah so i always make sure we have some sort of like 21 22 like option answer in that's wild i've never heard that before i i've heard of 
you know, teams going five wide or, or running like speed option, but not trip. And were they, was it triple or were they calling it? Yeah, it was triple. It, it was midline. Well, midline was, it wasn't midline triple, but midline and then inside and outside beer, like triple. Yeah. How do you install that? And what, was it good? I mean, did it, was it successful? Yeah. I mean, they beat us. I guess if you're not prepared. I guess if you're not prepared. <laughs> yeah, it worked. It we lost. Man, that's that's old Nebraska country, man. I mean, yes. all, at Northwest Missouri, all those guys know wing T option stuff. I mean, you can get some crazy. I mean, and Kyle sees crazy stuff, like stuff that I couldn't even imagine being six A in Texas. Like he sees crazy stuff up there in Northwest because you're you're right there in that Nebraska territory. All those old guys have, have ran all that stuff forever. So to to install it in in a week to us would be like that's insane. But to them, I mean, they've been doing that since they were kids. That's wild. Wow. Oh, well, you, you learned, you guys are learning something new. I'm learning something new. We all are learning. Something. That's wild. All right. Uh, Mr. Adam Gaylor, top, 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 uh, getting I triple installed on you multiple times. <laughs> Dude, I resign. I want, I want to find a new place to coach. <laughs> <laughs> What a bloody nightmare, dude. Oh, my God. I just – Bless you, Kyle. I pray I for you. Respect for Kyle's gone up a lot in this last 10 minutes. Oh, no doubt, man. No doubt. Um, you know, I, I saw you had – you're going to have Dub on, uh, you know, during the Blitz, and and uh, and Rowdy will be on there, and, and Coach Walls, I've coached against him as well. Um, I, th there's going to be one call that they're going to tell you that, th that they're going to have to make sure that, that they – that they're going to protect running pass, and that's boundary corner pressure, whether it's five man fire zone um, or uh, you know man free blitz. Um, you know over the last three or four years, it's it's boundary corner creeper. You know we're bringing four the the Bledsoe or Buccaneer, whatever you want to call it, um, and and you know whether it's odd space, even space, bear, um, we're going to bring boundary corner pressure. Um, and make sure that the that the offense knows that uh, you know at any point we're going to bring it. it whether it's a you know one of our NFL fronts where we're getting five zero and overload it and and um, um, you know bring the corner or or bring or change the you know run like a a, a text or a quick text or a pop with it where we can change the pattern and you're not really changing the coverage and um, it's it's not uh, you know your gap integrity stays the same you're not really changing um, your run fits up front. Um, but that's going to be in, you know, no matter what kind of structure we're in defensively, um, some kind of boundary corner pressure or, or boundary corner sim. The other one is um, the other one that makes me, you know, if, if I'm if I'm feeling lonely and I need, uh, um, you know, need some love is, is like shake to roll, you know, or sonic, you know, with sonic, whatever you want to call it, and play, um, you know, two trap to the field, play inverted halves into the boundary. Um, that's the other one that it's kind of, a, you know, you know, all hell's breaking loose and, and, uh, you know, let's, let's go. So whether it's odd or even spaced, um, but that's, I like both those because from the pattern, they're, they're kind of, this patterns are similar. Um, and so I know, you know, one's from the field, one's from the boundary. So you've got, um, you know, you got a little bit of, uh, you got answers, um, as far as how you want to, how you want to run it or, you know, in the middle of the field, you can bring it, um, you know, you can bring, um, you know, shake from the passing strength and, you can bring a safety instead of the corner uh, from the weak side. But, um, you know, for us, you know, the, the teams we face is, you know, they, they, you know, I love doing it against our offense in the spring, um, you know, and having bluffs um, with the corner too, to, to get them to throw hot into, you know, whether we're, we're bringing the corner and then we're ended up playing like trap with the safety and rolling the other safety over the top of it, or just showing it and playing, you know, two trap, um, you know, kicking the corner inside, but, um, you know, our offensive guys freak out, you know, corner hammer and our boundary corner. Um, would, he picked up on on that and he would <laughs> even without calling, um, you know, shows and disguises, he would he would understand the, the, the structure that we were in coverage wise. And he knew when we when he could show it and when he couldn't. Um, but, you know, the threat of, of boundary corner pressure, I think, is uh, uh, is something I want to make sure everybody, you know, that we play um, knows that we're going to run and, and run often. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Boundary corner pressure was our lead call my last year. And before that we ran an even front version of kind of, of the shakes, which for the listeners is, so imagine you're in an odd front, um, 
which if you're going to run the base version, it would be the Sam coming off the edge on the spill path, the strong safety. So it looks like three. So it looks like you're bringing the Sam and playing three. The strong safety rolls down like he's going to play over two, and then he comes off the edge. One of the backers cuts out, and then it's uh, rotational, two trap to the field. If you're going to run the sub package version, would be three down, slanting. The nickel would act like he's coming off the edge. Strong safety's rolling down like it's three, and then they both go. Um, nickel or Sam's on the spill path, right? I'm gonna correct me if I'm missing any of this. Uh, the difference is if you're an odd and you have that jack in the boundary, he'll drop to the uh, drop out to one in the corner, like you, like Coach mentioned, like the inverted half. Uh, we did it where it was we kept the safeties high, but yeah, that was our that was I can't believe I I left that off, but that was our safety blanket for a long time. Well, guys, we've come to the end. Thank you so much for your time. Um, why don't we run through real quick and um, give us your social media uh, handles so everybody can follow you. Uh, I'll start off at Coach Vass is my Twitter handle at MDGA podcast or at Run Vass Option are the show's accounts. Cody, why don't you give us your website and your social? Yeah, you can find me at matchquarters.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the underscore coach underscore a. Mr. Kogan. My Twitter is just at coach Kogan. Simple, simple and nice and elegant. Coach Gaylor. It is at coach Adam Gaylor uh, on Twitter and uh, I have no Facebook. I'm like, I'm like Bass. He's a big Facebook guy. Boy, you got to boy, you got to tell everybody that. Uh, and lastly, Coach King, what's your uh, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, Twitter is at Coach CJ Kinger. Well, guys, it's been fun. I'm going to turn it back over to Brendan. Thank you so much for having us, uh, Mr. Hall, and uh, we really, really appreciate it. You know, those mutual fellows. This was fantastic.